What's up guys, LQ here with the LQ Review. Thank you so much for joining me here at my YouTube channel. This is where we talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that I love to talk about. Movies, comic books, video games, TV shows. I really appreciate everybody being here and joining me. I've This YouTube channel has been going for about five years now and just... It's grown slowly, and it's still slowly growing, but everybody who subscribes, um, it just makes me happy that an old old guy like me, 43 years old, bald head, you know, it, it just makes me happy that um, I'm able to engage in the fan community because I love the fan community. All right, right now, we're going to rank the movies that I saw in January. So I saw nine new releases in January. Going to rank them worst to best. So at number nine is Destroy All Neighbors. I know a lot of people really like this movie. I saw a lot of really good reviews on it. I watched it, and it just didn't work for me. There were aspects of it that I appreciated. I appreciated the practical effects. I appreciated the, the attempt to blend gory horror and comedy. It just didn't really work for me. I'm just one person, though. If you liked it, that's great. I love that. Number eight is Deep Fear. Deep Fear is the shark movie that just released on Netflix a few days ago. And really, the only reason I put this one ahead of Destroy All Neighbors is because it's a shark movie. And I, I like shark movies, even bad ones. And I was happy with the CGI in this movie, but the story really didn't do much for me. All right, number seven. Number seven is Lift, another Netflix movie. This one's starring Kevin Hart, as well as several other familiar faces, but Kevin Hart was the lead. And this was fine. It was a fine movie. Uh, the, there was nothing great about it. It, it really just kind of... I think I said in my review, this is the type of movie that feels like it was written by AI. What are audiences liking right now? Let's put that data into our generator. And let's generate a script that audiences today are going to like. It was passionless. It was devoid of anything creative. But it was fine. It entertained you for, you know, the two hours that it was on. So I'll never watch it again. But it was fine. Number six is Self-Reliance. Self-Reliance is on Hulu. And it sold me something that... I didn't get. So it sells you this movie that this guy participates in a game where he's going to be hunted for 30 days by hunters. And that as long as he's with somebody, he can't be killed. And that's a loophole that he thinks he's exposed. So it sells you this thriller action adventure where this guy's trying to evade hunters. That's not what you get, though. What you get is more a introspective look at what it means to be lonely and what it means to have companionship and I, I i think that the movie that they sold me i would have rather had that but i didn't know that i wanted this too because this was this was good it wasn't great and I think the reason why I think it wasn't great is because it, of how misleading the movie was the, the marketing for the movie was but I have to admit, I kind of enjoyed Self-Reliance. Again, no, not my favorite movie of the month or anything, but I kind of enjoyed it. All right, number five. Number five is another Netflix movie. This is a documentary called The Greatest Night in Pop. I'm a sucker for, pops, for pop culture documentaries. I try to watch as many as I can, and I didn't know that I needed a documentary about We Are the World in my life, but I'm glad that I got it. Um, you know, love seeing you know, Ray Charles and um, Michael Jackson and um, just all these, all of these uh, um, classic musicians from my childhood, seeing them as they were in their heyday, coming together to accomplish something in all this footage that I'd never seen before of them. Um, it was really cool. It was really cool. So, Rewatchability may not be extremely high on this film, but I really enjoyed it while I was watching it. Number four is Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 1. Yes, this movie suffers from the fact that they're fitting it into, a, into an existing combined universe, which means that they cannot adapt the act, they cannot do a straight adaptation of Crisis on Infinite Earths, and that is definitely what I would have rather had them do. 
But as this movie went on, it got better and better and better. And by the end of it, I was like, bring on part two. Number three, number three. And I can't believe I'm ranking it this high. I really can't. But for me, number three is The Underdogs with Snoop Dogg. Yeah, the dude can't act. But I found this movie to be very sweet. I mean, it followed the, the Mighty Ducks formula, right? Everybody knows the Mighty Ducks formula. And it followed it to a T. It even made jokes about how it was following the formula. They, they name-dropped the Mighty Ducks. Um, but some, just because it's formulaic doesn't mean it's bad. There's a reason the formula exists, and that's because the formula works. I enjoyed this. There, there were things I didn't like about it. I, I would have rather seen Snoop Dogg's character go through more of an arc where he realized that the way he was engaging with the kids, the way he was engaging with the parents wasn't how a positive role model would engage. But at the end of the day, yeah, this was a sweet movie that left me smiling. Okay, number two. Number two is The Beekeeper with Jason Statham. This movie, you get exactly what it sold you. This movie sold a, a silly action adventure where a man with a certain set of skills goes out and wrecks up shop on some fools and that's exactly what happens in this movie is it silly is there campy moments absolutely but you get exactly what you paid for and it was it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun and i'm kind of hoping that they do another one but the best movie of january and it was by far nothing was really even close was society of the snow um, this was the true story, uh, the, uh, you know, what was originally told in a live of the rugby team that goes down in, in the, uh, in the Andes mountains and, uh, they have to resort to cannibalism in order to stay alive. The story is so much bigger than that though. That's just what we know. That's what we talk about, right? It's man, these guys had to eat each other. Yeah, that's fine. But this story was so much bigger than that. And there was such a greater tale of survival that you didn't get in that original movie alive that you got in society of snow and i gotta tell you this was a phenomenal movie i hope that it wins best picture uh for best foreign film at the oscars and um i just had a blast watching it blast is relative right like nothing that they were going through was fun but for me i just enjoyed watching this tale of human survival so that's my number one movie of January. What was your favorite movie of January? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel so you can keep getting this old bald guy's take on uh, what's going on in the pop culture world around us. And until next time, guys, we'll see you later.